Section forty one of Tales of Old Japan. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Awaii in April two thousand eleven. Tales of Old Japan by Lord Reedsdale. Appendix A. Part one. An account of the Harakiri from a rare Japanese manuscript. Seppuku harakiri is the mode of suicide adopted amongst samurai when they have no alternative but to die. Some there are who thus commit suicide of their own free will, others there are who, having committed some crime which does not put them outside the pale of the privileges of the samurai class, are ordered by the superiors to put an end to their own lives. It is needless to say that it is absolutely necessary that the principal, the witnesses, and the seconds who take part in the affair should be acquainted with all the ceremonies to be observed. A long time ago a certain daimyo invited a number of persons, versed in the various ceremonies, to call upon him to explain the different forms to be observed by the official witnesses, who inspect and verify the head, etc., and then to instruct him in the ceremonies to be observed in the act of suicide. Then he showed all these rites to his son and to all his retainers. Another person has said that as the ceremonies to be gone through by principal, witnesses and seconds are all very important matters, men should familiarize themselves with a thing which is so terrible in order that, should the time come for them to take part in it, they may not be taken by surprise. The witnesses go to see and certify the suicide. For seconds, men are wanted who have distinguished themselves in the military arts. In old days, men used to bear these things in mind, but nowadays the fashion is to be ignorant of such ceremonies, and if upon rare occasions a criminal is handed over to a daimyo's charge that he may perform harakiri, it often happens at the time of execution that there is no one among all the prince's retainers who is competent to act as second, in which case a man has to be engaged in a hurry from some other quarter to cut off the head of the criminal, and for that day he changes his name and becomes a retainer of the prince, either of the middle or lowest class, and the affair is entrusted to him, and so the difficulty is got over nor is this considered to be a disgrace. It is a great breach of decorum if the second, who is a most important officer, commits any mistake, such as not striking off the head at a blow, in the presence of the witnesses sent by the government. On this account a skilful person must be employed, and, to hide the unmanliness of his own people, a prince must perform the ceremony in this imperfect manner. Every samurai should be able to cut off a man's head, therefore to have to employ a stranger to act as second is to incur the charge of ignorance of the acts of war and is a bitter mortification. However, young men, trusting to their youthful ardor, are apt to be careless and are certain to make a mistake. Some people there are who, not lacking in skill on ordinary occasions, lose their presence of mind in public, and cannot do themselves justice. It is all the more important, therefore, as the act occurs but rarely, that men who are liable to be called upon to be either principals or seconds or witnesses in the harakiri should constantly be examined in their skill as swordsmen and should be familiar with all the rites, in order that when the time comes they may not lose their presence of mind. According to one authority, capital punishment may be divided into two kinds, beheading and strangulation. The ceremony of harakiri was added afterwards in the case of persons belonging to the military class being condemned to death. This was first instituted in the days of the Ashikaga dynasty. Footnote Ashikaga, third dynasty of shoguns, flourished from Anno Domini 1336 to 1568. 
the practice of suicide by disemboweling is of great antiquity this is the time when the ceremonies attending it were invented End footnote. at that time the country was in a state of utter confusion and there were men who although fighting were neither guilty of high treason nor of infidelity to their feudal lords but who by the chances of war were taken prisoners to drag out such men as these bound as criminals and cut their heads off was intolerably cruel accordingly men hit upon a ceremonious mode of suicide by disemboweling in order to comfort the departed spirit even at present where it becomes necessary to put to death a man who has been guilty of some act not unworthy of a samurai at the time of the execution witnesses are sent to the house and the criminal having bathed and put on new clothes in obedience to the commands of his superiors puts an end to himself but does not on that account forfeit his rank as a samurai this is a law for which in all truth men should be grateful on the preparation of the place of execution in old days the ceremony of harakiri used to be performed in a temple in the third year of the period called kanye anno domini sixteen twenty six a certain person having been guilty of treason was ordered to disembowel himself on the fourteenth day of the first month in the temple of kichi joji at komagome in yedo eighteen years later the retainer of a certain daimyo having had a dispute with a sailor belonging to an osaka coasting ship killed the sailor and an investigation having been made into the matter by the governor of osaka the retainer was ordered to perform harakiri on the twentieth day of the sixth month in the temple called sokuzanji in osaka during the period shoho middle of seventeenth century a certain man having been guilty of heinous misconduct performed harakiri in the temple called shimpukuji in the koji street of yedo on the fourth day of the fifth month of the second year of the period meireki anno domini 1656 a certain man for having avenged the death of his cousin's husband at a place called shimitsudani in the koji street disembowelled himself in the temple called honseiji on the twenty-sixth day of the sixth month of the eighth year of the period Yempo, anno domini 1680 at the funeral ceremonies in honour of the anniversary of the death of genyuin sama a former shogun naito itsumi no kami having a cause of hatred against nagai shinano no kami killed him at one blow with a short sword in the main hall of the temple called sojoji the burial place of the shoguns in yedo itsumi no kami was arrested by the officers present and on the following day performed harakiri at kiridoshi in the temple called seiryuji in modern times the ceremony has taken place at night either in the palace or in the garden of a daimyo to whom the condemned man has been given in charge whether it takes place in the palace or in the garden depends upon the rank of the individual daimyos and hatamotos as a matter of course and the higher retainers of the shogun disembowel themselves in the palace retainers of lower rank should do so in the garden in the case of vassals of feudatories according to the rank of their families those who being above the grade of captains carry the baton should perform the harakiri in the palace all others in the garden footnote a baton with a tassel of paper strips used for giving directions in wartime End footnote. if when the time comes the person engaged in the ceremony are in any doubt as to the proper rules to be followed they should inquire of competent persons and settle the question at the beginning of the eighteenth century during the period genroku when asano takumi no kami disembowelled himself in the palace of a daimyo called tamura as the whole thing was sudden and unexpected 
The garden was covered with matting, and on the top of this thick mats were laid, and a carpet, and the affair was concluded so. But there are people who say that it was wrong to treat the daimyo thus, as if he had been an ordinary samurai. But it is said that in old times it was the custom that the ceremony should take place upon a leather carpet spread in the garden, and further, that the proper place is inside a picket fence tied together in the garden. So it is wrong for persons who are only acquainted with one form of the ceremony to accuse Tamura of having acted improperly. If, however, the object was to save the house from the pollution of blood, then the accusation of ill-will may well be brought, for the preparation of the place is of great importance. Formerly it was the custom that, for personages of importance, the enclosure within the picket fence should be of thirty-six feet square. An entrance was made to the south, and another to the north. The door to the south was called Shugiyomon, the door of the practice of virtue. That to the north was called Umbanmon, the door of the warm basin. Footnote. No Japanese authority that I have been able to consult gives any explanation of this singular name. End footnote. Two mats with white binding were arranged in the shape of a hammer, the one at right angles to the other, six feet of white silk, four feet broad, were stretched on the mat, which was placed lengthwise. At the four corners were erected four posts for curtains. In front of the two mats was erected a portal, eight feet high by six feet broad, in the shape of the portals in front of temples, made of a fine sort of bamboo, wrapped in white silk. Footnote. White, in China and Japan, is the color of mourning. End footnote. White curtains four feet broad were hung at the four corners, and four flags six feet long on which should be inscribed four quotations from the sacred books. These flags, it is said, were immediately after the ceremony carried away to the grave. At night two lights were placed, one upon either side of the two mats. The candles were placed in saucers upon stands of bamboo, four feet high, wrapped in white silk. The person who was to disembowel himself, entering the picket fence by the north entrance, took his place upon the white silk upon the mat facing the north. Some there were, however, who said that he should sit facing the west. In that case, the whole place must be prepared accordingly. The seconds enter the enclosure by the south entrance, at the same time as the principal enters by the north, and take their places on the mat that is placed crosswise. Nowadays, when the harakiri is performed inside the palace, a temporary place is made on purpose, either in the garden or in some unoccupied spot. But if the criminal is to die on the day on which he is given in charge, or on the next day, the ceremony, having to take place so quickly, is performed in the reception room. Still, even if there is a lapse of time between the period of giving the prisoner in charge and the execution, it is better that the ceremony should take place in a decent room in the house than in a place made on purpose. If it is heard that, for fear of dirtying his house, a man has made a place expressly, he will be blamed for it. It surely can be no disgrace to the house of a soldier that he was ordered to perform the last offices towards a samurai who died by harakiri. To slay his enemy against whom he has cause of hatred, and then to kill himself, is the part of a noble samurai and it is sheer nonsense to look upon the place where he has disemboweled himself as polluted. In the beginning of the 18th century, 17 of the retainers of Asano Takumi no Kami performed harakiri in the garden of a palace at Shirokane in Yedo. When it was over, the people of the palace called upon the priests of a sect named Shugenja to come and purify the place, but when the lord of the palace heard this, he ordered the place to be left as it was, for what need was there to purify a place where faithful samurai had died by their own hand? 
but in other places to which the remainder of the retainers of takumi no kami were entrusted it is said that the places of execution were purified but the people of that day praised kumamoto ko the prince of higo to whom the palace at shirokane belonged it is a currish thing to look upon death in battle or by harakiri as a pollution this is a thing to bear in mind in modern times the place of harakiri is eighteen feet square in all cases in the centre is a place to sit upon and the condemned man is made to sit facing the witnesses at other times he is placed with his side to the witnesses this is according to the nature of the spot in some cases the seconds turn their backs to the witnesses it is open to question however whether this is not a breach of etiquette the witnesses should be consulted upon these arrangements if the witnesses have no objection the condemned man should be placed directly opposite to them the place where the witnesses are seated should be removed more than twelve or eighteen feet from the condemned man the place from which the sentence is read should also be close by the writer has been furnished with a plan of the harakiri as it is performed at present although the ceremony is gone through in other ways also still it is more convenient to follow the manner indicated if the execution takes place in a room a kerchief of five breadths of white cotton cloth or a quilt should be laid down and it is also said that two mats should be prepared however as there are already mats in the room there is no need for special mats two red rugs should be spread all over sewed together one on the top of the other for if the white cotton cloth be used alone the blood will soak through on to the mats therefore it is right the rugs should be spread on the twenty-third day of the eighth month of the fourth year of the period yen ki yo anno domini seventeen forty at the harakiri of a certain person there were laid down a white cloth eight feet square and on that a quilt of light green cotton six feet square and on that a cloth of white hemp six feet square and on that two rugs on the third day of the ninth month of the ninth year of the period tempo anno domini eighteen thirty eight at the harakiri of a certain person it is said that there was spread a large double cloth of white cotton and on that two rugs but of these two occasions the first must be commended for its careful preparation if the execution be at night candlesticks of white wood should be placed at each of the four corners lest the seconds be hindered in their work in the place where the witnesses are to sit ordinary candlesticks should be placed according to etiquette but an excessive illumination is not decorous two screens covered with white paper should be set up behind the shadow of which are concealed the dirk upon a tray a bucket to hold the head after it has been cut off an incense burner a pail of water and a basin the above rules apply equally to the ceremonies observed when the harakiri takes place in a garden in the latter case the place is hung round with a white curtain which need not be new for the occasion two mats a white cloth and a rug are spread if the execution is at night lanterns of white paper are placed on bamboo poles at the four corners the sentence having been read inside the house the persons engaged in the ceremony proceed to the place of execution but according to circumstances the sentence may be read at the place itself in the case of asano takumi no kami the sentence was read out in the house and he afterwards performed harakiri in the garden on the third day of the fourth month of the fourth year of the period ten mai anno domini seventeen eighty four a hatamoto named sano having received his sentence in the supreme court house disembowelled himself in the garden in front of the prison when the ceremony takes place in the garden matting must be spread all the way to the place so that sandals need not be worn the reason for this is that some men in that position suffer from a rush of blood to the head 
from nervousness, so their sandals might slip off their feet without their being aware of their loss, and as this would have a very bad appearance, it is better to spread matting. Care must be taken, lest in spreading the matting, a place be left where two mats join, against which the foot might trip. The white screens and other things are prepared as has been directed above. If any curtailment is made, it must be done as well as circumstances will permit. According to the crime of which a man, who is handed over to any daimyo's charge, is guilty, it is known whether he will have to perform harakiri, and the preparations should be made accordingly. Asano Takumi no Kami was taken to the palace of Tamura-sama at the hour of the monkey, between three and five in the afternoon, took off his dress of ceremony, partook of a bowl of soup and five dishes, and drank two cups of warm water, and at the hour of the cock, between five and seven in the evening, disemboweled himself. A case of this kind requires much attention, for great care should be taken that the preparations be carried on without the knowledge of the principal. If a temporary room has been built expressly for the occasion, to avoid pollution of the house, it should be kept a secret. It once happened that a criminal was received in charge at the palace of a certain nobleman, and when his people were about to erect a temporary building for the ceremony, they wrote to consult some of the parties concerned. The letter ran as follows. The house in which we live is very small and inconvenient in all respects. We have ordered the guard to treat our prisoner with all respect, but our retainers who are placed on guard are much inconvenienced for want of space. Besides, in the event of fire breaking out or any extraordinary event taking place, the place is so small that it would be difficult to get out. We are thinking, therefore, of adding an apartment to the original building, so that the guard may be able at all times to go in and out freely, and that if, in case of fire or otherwise, we should have to leave the house, we may do so easily. We beg to consult you upon this point. When a samurai has to perform harakiri by the command of his own feudal lord, the ceremony should take place in one of the lesser palaces of the clan. Once upon a time, a certain prince of the Inuye clan, having a just cause of offence against his steward, who was called Ishikawa Tozayemon, and wishing to punish him, caused him to be killed in his principal palace at Kandabashi in Yedo. When this matter was reported to the shogun, having been convicted of disrespect of the privileges of the city, he was ordered to remove to his lesser palace at Asakusa. Now, although the harakiri cannot be called properly an execution, still, as it only differs from an ordinary execution, in that by it the honor of the samurai is not affected, it is only a question of degree, it is a matter of ceremonial. If the principal palace is a long distance from the shogun's castle, then the harakiri may take place there, but there can be no objection whatever to its taking place in a minor palace. Footnote. The principal yashikis, palaces, of the nobles are for the most part immediately round the shogun's castle, in the enclosure known as the official quarter. Their proximity to the palace forbids their being made the scenes of executions. End footnote. Nowadays, when a man is condemned to harakiri by a daimyo, the ceremony usually takes place in one of the lesser palaces. The place commonly selected is an open space near the horse exercising ground, and the preparations which I have described above are often shortened according to circumstances. When a retainer is suddenly ordered to perform harakiri during a journey, a temple or shrine should be hired for the occasion. On these hurried occasions, coarsed mats, faced with finer matting or common mats, may be used. If the criminal is of rank to have an armor-bearer, a carpet of skin should be spread, should one be easily procurable. The straps of the skin, which are at the head, should, according to old custom,
be to the front, so that the fur may point backwards. In old days, when the ceremony took place in a garden, a carpet of skin was spread. To hire a temple for the purpose of causing a man to perform harakiri was a frequent occurrence. It is doubtful whether it may be done at the present time. This sort of question should be referred beforehand to some competent person that the course to be adopted may be clearly understood. In the period Kambun, Anno Domini 1661 to 1673, a prince Sakai, travelling through the Bishu territory, hired a temple or shrine for one of his retainers to disembowel himself in, and so the affair was concluded. On the ceremonies observed at the harakiri of a person given in charge to a daimyo. When a man has been ordered by the government to disembowel himself, the public censors, who have been appointed to act as witnesses, write to the prince who has the criminal in charge to inform them that they will go to his palace on public business. This message is written directly to the chief and is sent by an assistant censor, and a suitable answer is returned to it. Before the ceremony, the witnesses send an assistant censor to see the place and look at the plan of the house, and to take a list of the names of the persons who are to be present. He also has an interview with the kaishaku, or seconds, and examines them upon the way of performing the ceremonies. When all the preparations have been made, he goes to fetch the censors, and they all proceed together to the place of execution, dressed in their hempen cloth dress of ceremony. The retainers of the palace are collected to do obeisance in the entrance yard, and the lord to whom the criminal has been entrusted goes as far as the front porch to meet the censors, and conducts them to the front reception room. The chief censor then announces to the lord of the palace that he has come to read out the sentence of such an one who has been condemned to perform harakiri, and that the second censor has come to witness the execution of the sentence. The lord of the palace then inquires whether he is expected to attend the execution in person, and, if any of the relations or family of the criminal should beg to receive his remains, whether their request should be complied with. After this he announces that he will order everything to be made ready, and leaves the room. Tea, a firebox for smoking, and sweetmeats are set before the censors but they decline to accept any hospitality until their business shall have been concluded. The minor officials follow the same rule. If the censors express a wish to see the place of execution, the retainers of the palace show the way, and their lord accompanies them. In this, however, he may be replaced by one of his caro or counsellors. They then return and take their seats in the reception room. After this, when all the preparations have been made, the master of the house leads the censors to the place where the sentence is to be read, and it is etiquette that they should wear both sword and dirk. Footnote. A Japanese removes his sword on entering a house, retaining only his dirk. End footnote. The lord of the palace takes his place on one side, the inferior censors sit on either side in a lower place. The councillors and other officers of the palace also take their places. One of the councillors present, addressing the censors without moving from his place, asks whether he shall bring forth the prisoner. Previously to this, the retainers of the palace, going to the room where the prisoner is confined, inform him that, as the censors have arrived, he should change his dress, and the attendants bring out a change of clothes upon a large tray. It is when he has finished his toilet that the witnesses go forth and take their places in the appointed order, and the principal is then introduced. He is preceded by one man, who should be of the rank of Monogashira, retainer of the fourth rank, who wears a dirk, but no sword. Six men act as attendants. They should be of the fifth or sixth rank. They walk on either side of the principal. 
they are followed by one man who should be of the rank of yonin counsellor of the second class when they reach the place the leading man draws on one side and sits down and the six attendants sit down on either side of the principal the officer who follows him sits down behind him and the chief censor reads the sentence when the reading of the sentence is finished the principal leaves the room and again changes his clothes and the chief censor immediately leaves the palace but the lord of the palace does not conduct him to the door the second censor returns to the reception room until the principal has changed his clothes when the principal has taken his seat at the place of execution the councillors of the palace announce to the second censor that all is ready he then proceeds to the place wearing his sword and dirk the lord of the palace also wearing his sword and dirk takes his seat on one side the inferior censors and councillors sit in front of the censor they wear the dirk only the assistant second brings a dirk upon a tray and having placed it in front of the principal withdraws on one side when the principal leans his head forward his chief second strikes off his head which is immediately shown to the censor who identifies it and tells the master of the palace that he is satisfied and thanks him for all his trouble the corpse as it lies is hidden by a white screen which is set up around it and incense is brought out the witnesses leave the place the lord of the palace accompanies them as far as the porch and the retainers prostrate themselves in the yard as before the retainers who should be present at the place of execution are one or two councillors karo two or three second councillors yonin two or three monogashira one chief of the palace ruzui six attendants one chief second two assistant seconds one man to carry incense who need not be a person of rank any samurai will do they attend to the setting up of the white screen the duty of burying the corpse and of setting the place in order again devolves upon four men these are selected from samurai of the middle or lower class during the performance of their duties they hitch up their trousers and wear neither sword nor dirk their names are previously sent in to the censor who acts as witness and to the junior censors should they desire it before the arrival of the chief censor the requisite utensils for extinguishing a fire are prepared firemen are engaged and officers constantly go the rounds to watch against fire footnote in japan where fires are of daily occurrence the fire buckets and other utensils form part of the gala dress of the house of a person of rank End footnote. from the time when the chief censor comes into the house until he leaves it no one is allowed to enter the premises the servants on guard at the entrance porch should wear their hempen dresses of ceremony everything in the palace should be conducted with decorum and the strictest attention paid in all things when any one is condemned to harakiri it would be well that people should go to the palace of the prince of higo and learn what transpired at the execution of the ronins of asano takumi no kami a curtain was hung round the garden in front of the reception room three mats were laid down and upon these was placed a white cloth the condemned men were kept in the reception room and summoned one by one two men one on each side accompanied them the second followed behind and they proceeded together to the place of execution when the execution was concluded in each case the corpse was hidden from the sight of the chief witness by a white screen folded up in white cloth placed on a mat and carried off to the rear by two foot soldiers it was then placed in a coffin the blood-stained ground was sprinkled with sand and swept clean fresh mats were laid down and the place prepared anew after which the next man was summoned to come forth End of section forty one